Welcome back! You are watching Sliced Line, and this is our Beginner's Command tutorial series. Last time we learned how to make very fast clocks using the set block and fill commands. We have also previously learned how to use the very basics of the scoreboard system to measure the speed of our clocks. Today we're going to expand our knowledge of the scoreboard system and learn how to use it to store information about players or entities, and how to retrieve that information when we need it. We will also be using our fast clocks to create our first actual device. Let's start by going back to the simple version of this clock, the one which was just a line and not this 3x3 plane. We do that by removing the Y coordinate from this fill command. And of course also this fill command. We don't see a difference, but as you recall, fill clocks operate by replacing the blocks every frame, so trying to break it makes it immediately pop back up again. We can see that these blocks are no longer clocks by simply breaking them. We now have a smaller clock which is easier to manage. Remember how we previously had a system that would place quartz blocks when we walked around? We can use this fast clock to do the same thing, but now much quicker and better. Let's place a command block under here. This block is next to this redstone block, which means that it's activated every tick of the game simulation. If we now use the execute command we learned before, execute, at A, which is for all players, and relative coordinates for the player position. As you recall, this means that we will execute another command in the position of every player in the world. I am currently alone in this world, so this command that we are about to enter here will execute for me. We are going to recreate our quartz path making machine by using the set block command and relative coordinates. Minus one on the y axis means that we are setting a quartz block underneath my feet. You can see that the block underneath my feet immediately turned into a quartz block, and as I walk around, they now instantly get turned into quartz. This is much more smooth than our previous system, which only occasionally set a quartz block under our feet. That is a quick demonstration of the power of fill clocks. Let's say, however, that we don't always want this quartz setting ability but only want it to be active sometimes, we can implement this state, on or off, using a scoreboard objective. Let's add one. Scoreboard objectives add. Remember the syntax of this command. Scoreboard objectives add name criteria type display name. We will simply name our quartz on, and we will again use the dummy type to indicate that we do not want the game to update this scoreboard objective for us. Unless you intend to show your scoreboard objective on screen, it doesn't really matter what you put as the display name. Remember that you can copy a block by control middle clicking on it. Let's do that with this command block and move it over here, so it's later in the fill. It's good to know which order commands execute on a fill clock. Look at your coordinates and see which is the positive direction for your fill clock. Our fill clock is directed along the Z axis, and this is the positive direction. That means that these blocks have a lower Z value than these blocks. Commands will always execute with the lowest values first, so this block executes before this block which executes before this block. If you want to know the exact order, I have made an advanced commands tutorial that you probably know enough by now to understand fully. For now though, let's focus on our scoreboards. Let's take blocks of some sort. How about a block of emerald? And a block of gold? Actually, let's simply turn this off for now. We'll stash our command over here, so we can reuse it later. Now we're going to build a device, which switches on whenever we stand under an emerald block, like so, and that switches off whenever we stand under a gold block, like so. We will use our scoreboard for this, and a form of the execute command that we skipped over earlier, the execute detect form. Let's place a command block here, and start typing the execute command. 
execute at A in the coordinates of all players, we will want to do a detect. And the position we want to detect in is the same position as the player, but two blocks above their feet. That is the block directly above their head. The execute detect form is execute the player or target selector, coordinates detect another set of coordinates, a block name and a block data value. We are simply going to do emerald block and minus one. When we place minus one as a data value, it means any data value. This whole command now works exactly as an execute command normally would, but will only execute if there is an emerald block above our head. Now we can place a second command after this, so let's do that. Scoreboard players set at p quartz, quartz on 1. We used the scoreboard players set command before, but let's repeat its function. We set the score 1 in the scoreboard objective quartz on on the player at p. Player at p means target the nearest player. The nearest player is calculated from the position we are executing the command, but since we have strung this onto an execute command, we are executing it in a certain place. In this case, at p will then refer to the nearest player to a player standing underneath an emerald block. That of course means the player standing underneath the emerald block. Let's try that out. In order to do that, let's do scoreboard objective set display sidebar chords on. This will let us see what's going on in our objective. We don't see anything yet, however, because no player or entity has any score in that objective. But if we step in underneath this emerald block, we see that I get a score of 1 in the quartz path making scoreboard, which is our quartz on scoreboard. Now we can do the same thing with a gold block. Place a command there, and we simply copy this entire command into this command block, and replace the emerald block with a gold block, and the 1 with a 0. This means that as I walk under the gold block, my score turns to 0, and as I walk under the emerald block, my score turns to 1. So now I have a way of switching something from 0 to 1, which usually means on and off. So let's take our quartz making command again and put it back on the clock. Let's place it here and edit it. Currently, this works for every player in the entire world, but we would like it to only be active for players who have the quartz on score of 1. We can do that by adding a command target selector argument to this. Those are written in square brackets, and in this case they all start with score, underscore, the name of the scoreboard objective. In this case it's quartz on. There are two forms of this. One is to simply put score underscore and the name of the scoreboard equals and some numbers. That means at most this number. So this would mean any player who has a score in the courts on scoreboard objective that is one or less. That's not exactly what we want in this case because it would also match zero. The second form is score underscore the name of the objective underscore again and min equals and then a number. This means match any player who has a score in the quartz on scoreboard objective that is at least one, which is exactly what we want. Let's try it out. I now have the ability to make a quartz path, but if I step under here, my path making stops. Walking under the emerald block again, starts it back up. This is a very simple example, but I'm sure you understand how this becomes very useful as you start learning more and more ways to switch things on and off and more and more effects to apply. You now know both how to set scores for players or entities and how to use those scores in other commands. Next time we'll be expanding on the system with more scoreboard logic. 
looking at other criteria types than the dummy criteria type. Until then, good luck with your commands. And as always, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below if you need any help or have any questions. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.